Shalom, Yasharala. I want to start off first things first, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakar Kadash, which in the Paleo Hebrew tongues, correct names of the Heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the GMS, and Shalom to the sister and brothers laboring in this truth. And Shalom to the brothers and sisters listening and studying to show themselves approved. Shalom. I want to start this lesson off by talking about, you know, something that's going on in the world, which the vibration of what's going on around the world is war. We are at war right now, Yasharala. World War Three is right at, at the cups of happening. All we all all something had to do is one false move, one email, or breaking news, and it's on. You know, World War Three will pop off and. You know, we got three fronts, you know, either one can happen, and we're looking at World War Three, and it's inevitable because the Most High, Yahweh Bashmi Shah said that there will be a third world war, so there's going to be a third world war. Ain't no way looking around it, ain't no way trying to wish it away, it's going to happen. And, you know, just talking through the spirit, I think it might pop off this year. So, I want to bring out three points Three things is going on in the world right now that can kick off the events for World War III. And one of the first ones I'm going to talk about is China. You know, Moab is, you know, fighting with itself, fighting for a province that used to be up under his jurisdiction. But Babylon the Great, United States, has wrestled away some of its land, which one of them is called Taiwan. Taiwan has sovereignty based on the United States protecting them. And China now says they want Taiwan back. So it's kind of like, you know, somebody fighting over their old girlfriend, you know, like she, she leave and go with the other dude. Then the other dude get his stuff together, get his money up. He like, man, I want my girl back. You know, and they, they're going to go to war over her. And Taiwan is saying that it doesn't want to be a part of China no more. Taiwan wants to be its own thing. But China you know, it's putting that gun to their head, talking about you better fall back under us or we're going to crush you and make you fall back. And so what they're doing now in Taiwan is they're getting ready. Taiwan, and they're, they're a small military, you know, very small country. They really don't have the power to fight China. So what Taiwan is banking on is that the U.S. will back them up. And the U.S. and Taiwan have a relationship because the U.S. military has bases in Taiwan, that way they can strike China real quickly. You know, they can mobilize real quick on China. And China knows that. They're trying to kick the U.S. out of Taiwan because of China, you know, they're getting ready. They want to evade the U.S. You know, they're ready to be, take that number one mantle. Babylon the Great still has that mantle based on things they did in the past and their military power. And now China has grown. You know, that, that red that red horse has grown and they want their power back. They want the number one title. Only way you can get it, you got to knock off the person that got number one. So I'm playing a little clip. You know, uh, the Ox sent me with Taiwan flex, you know, a little bit of the little military power they got. They basically let China know, like, look here, we're not falling under communism. We're going to do democracy because Taiwan has a democracy kind of set up like Babylon the Great, the U.S. government. They're set up like that. China is a communist country. You know, you do whatever the government says do. And Taiwan doesn't want to be up under that type of rulership. But China's talking about, look here, you ain't got a choice. You're going to fall back or we're going to crush you. So here go a couple of, you know, uh, Taiwan talking about, you know, we're we going to fight. We ain't coming back. So check this out, y'all, Sharala. Uh, 
Man, you see that? So Taiwan's getting ready for war, y'all, Sharala. Like, they're doing war practice, getting their tanks together, getting their military together. They know they're going to have to go to war with China. They know that. And China's getting ready for war, too. They doing practices where they shooting uh, battle battleships, battle tanks out the air, using, you know, their hypersonic missiles. War is coming. You know, war is on the horizon. You can see war going to happen in Babylon the Great. War going to happen overseas. So we're in wartime. And I'm doing this lesson that if any brother or sister has a loved one that's thinking about joining the military, tell them, hell no, do not join the military because they're going to have you fighting overseas and they're going to have this all that's going to lead to war with Yahweh shot and you're going to get demolished when that happens. So this is not the time to be in the military or if you're in the military. If I was you, I'll try to get a dishonor, be discharged, get out the military because this is not. The time to be there. You you will go to war. You're going to get shipped overseas. So with that being said, you seeing that, that brings me my first scripture to mind. Which let's get that. Let's go to Matthew. Is like, I saw you heard now. If you're not hearing about the crown 19, man, you're hearing about war. And you got multiple countries. And multiple people about to go to war. So where are we at? Yep, right here. This is Matthew 24 and 6. And yes, you shall hear of wars and of uh Salakia. Salakia had a commercial. All right, starting over. This is Matthew 24 and 6. And yes, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that yea be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we are hearing war right now. You're hearing they're talking about war, rumors of war is gonna be war. You know, that's all you hear. If you're not hearing about the, the crown 19, it's about war. These countries are ready to go to war with each other. And he told us to be not troubled, for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So basically the most high right there is telling us like World War Three has to happen. And we shouldn't be troubled about that. Be scared like, oh, no, it's going to be war. What we going to do? You know, the hopeful elect going to be protected. And, and the end is not yet. World War Three leads to the end because it leads to Armageddon. When all the nations going to gather up, you know, Jehoshaphat, the valley, and they're going to go to war with Yahweh Shah and, and the heavenly army. That's going to bring the end. So this because you hear World War Three, the end ain't yet. And it's like, we, we got three war fronts right now, which I'm, I'm going to go read an article. You got Taiwan trying to stay sovereign against China. You have Ukraine trying to stay sovereign against Russia. And then you have Iran still mad about what Israel did to them. You know, the, the Jewish people, they bombed and killed Iran's top military general. I think a year ago or maybe two years ago, you know. There's this thing on top of my head, but Iran ain't forgot that, man. Plus, Israel, Iran knows who Israel is. They know that they are the, the center god of Satan. They know they're the fake people. And they they got nuclear capability right now. Iran does. North Korea has nuclear capability. So you got small countries that now have nuclear capability, and they are talking their big talk like, look here, man, I'm about to strike you. What they been saying, I'm going to get an article. With me saying all of that, check it out. This is a, a post from Jerusalem Post. It says, one wrong move. To Iran, Times reveals Iran's targets in Israel. Check it out. It says, a rocket alert map displaying a list of targets Iran will strike, including pens in Lebanese territory and on the Palestinian cities. An Iranian newspaper published a map on Wednesday threatening Israel with missile attacks. The map shows pins representing rocket alerts for dozens of potential targets, including Lebanese territory and Palestinian cities in the West Bank. You know, and it was published on the front page of Tehran Times. You know, and uh, we're going to keep reading. As intensification of the Israeli military threats against Iran 
seems to suggest that the Zionist regiment has forgotten that Iran is more than capable of hitting them from anywhere. They got them ICBM missiles. They got their nuclear capability. You know, wrote the paper adding, it doesn't need to remind the illegitimate regiment of Israel of Iran's defense capabilities. You know, oh, here we go. They're going to talk about their leader I was talking about. The article ended with a 2013 quote by Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei warning that Iran would destroy Tel Aviv and Haifa of Israel makes a mistake and conducts a military strike. You know? Okay, I thought that, I think that's the uh, the one they got now. That's not the one that that was murdered by Israel. And I think they, Israel, they used the, uh, I think the military, the U.S. did that. If I'm not mistaken, you know, Yashra, you can look that up. But I think the U.S. had involvement in the hand of killing Iran's top military general at the time. And they're mad about that. I knew it was going to be some comeback for that. They, they just, they, everybody think they died off. I'm like, no, Iran is building a military power. They getting their missiles together. And it's going to be some comeback for that. They was very pissed off when that happened. And they did it by a drone strike. So... You got Iran and Israel going at it, which, you know, it, it, it's, uh, I might get that scripture. It said that the land would be beat down by the Gentiles. That's why I said none of our people be in Israel right now. Israel is about to get demolished, you know. <laughs> Israel about to go to war. Israel about to get, you know, airstruck with missiles right now. And, you know, also it's going to lead to the, the nuclear missiles getting struck. So, that's why it don't matter where you go right now, man. The place you need to go is in the secret place of your high Bashiach shot and get on that chariot. Moving to another country is not going to help you. These missiles going to go off. They're going to hit everywhere. You got to be in that ark, which the chariot going to represent the New Age ark. You got to be protected. You got to be up and preserved to avoid the, these military strikes that's about to come. So let, let's keep on moving to another situation and look you got iran which is a small country you got taiwan which is a small country you got uh what, what's the other one? you uh what did i say you got tyran taiwan well, you got iran taiwan and you got ukraine you know a country over there right up under russia that's fighting for sovereignty that you know russia's talking about i gotta take that land back ukraine belongs to russia we're going to build back together. And Ukraine's like, I don't want to be back with Russia because Russia's another uh, a communist country. And Ukraine is a democracy country. And Ukraine has what? The same thing Taiwan got. They're going through the same thing. Ukraine got U.S. backing because they don't want to be a part of Russia anymore. So they're going to go to war. It's going to be war over there in Russia. Let me pull that article up. And it's going to be over. It's really over that land. But they have another situation where they're going to fight over a, 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 a oil, a gas pipeline that got built that Putin needs to work his way around the U.S. sanctions. But Ukraine is going to shut it off because Ukraine is allied with NATO and the U.S. And they're trying to help, you know, Russia from building this power and working itself around. Russia like Putin like, man, hey, look here, man, we about to plow through whoever Whoever getting away, about to get this business. They got troops right now on the Ukrainian border ready to invade Ukraine because Putin has said it multiple times. We're going to take Ukraine back, whether they like it or not. And Ukraine is looking like, U.S., protect me. You know, don't let Russia come get me. So they're doing the same thing Taiwan doing. They're getting ready for war, too. And the first domino for war is there's a, a pipeline called the Nord Stream 2, which we're going to read about in this article that's in Ukraine that Putin needs in order to keep Russia with that, you know, the oil and the gas they need so they can, you know, pop off this big war. Because the U.S. is putting sanctions on them. And he's he got these nations, the BRIC nations in Russia. What he's doing is he's working his way around the U.S. He's going uh, on the side of them and he's going above their head. And the U.S. really looking weak right now. Like, like Babylon the Great, the U.S. right now is like struggling to hang on to power. These other nations are are getting stronger, and they they saying like, man, we about to bring it to you, you know. So check it out. Read this article. This Ukraine pledges to stop 
Nord Stream 2. Kiev, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Kiev, Cave, has a plan to obstruct the launch of the controversial Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which will bring gas from Russia to Germany through the Baltic Sea, a top Ukrainian energy executive has claimed. So check it out. Yuri Vetreko, chairman of the board of state-owned energy firm Naftato Gas, wrote on Facebook on Thursday that we have a plan for further legal steps to hinder the launch of this Russian pipeline. He went on to say that Kiev will make the maximum effort to stop the project from operating, explaining that Ukrainian efforts had already worked to delay of the completion of this pipeline for more than a year. Now you see how they're trying to stop it? Like it's, it's completed. But they're not letting it operate. Putin needs that to operate. He needs that pipeline. He's been hollering about that for the last couple of years that, you know, he needs that up and running. So, you know, he can get that gas and get that oil, that pipeline, so he doesn't have to rely on China or the U.S. for what he needs. You know, he's trying to be independent, self-sufficient. You know, that's power. When you're self-sufficient, you're independent. You don't need nobody. That's power right there. And that's what he's trying to do. For his nation, his country, which is gonna lead to war. Cause you see, Ukraine shutting it down. Like, nope, no, you don't. You know, and they doing that on behalf of the US. Ukraine is doing what the US tell them to do. That's why really Ukraine, I'm looking at them, they're in a trick bag. You know, they don't went against the, the country that you know they used to be a part of. And you know, the US really can't back them like that. I, I really feel like the US can't protect them like that. Russia is too close to Ukraine, so and that's going to lead, if, if U.S. jumps in, it's going to lead to World War III. Because then Russia going to, you know, fight. And then Russia going to bring in China because that's one of their allies. And everybody just going to bang and shoot missiles and, and fight. So check it out. Oh, this is going to explain what I just said. This is the result of a collaboration with American and European partners, he claimed. Adding that Navigas had also inserted himself into the procedure for Certified Nord Stream 2, which is currently ongoing. So America and Europe, which that Europe goes into NATO. That's that's what uh, NATO and, and U.S. is allied. Although NATO is trying to break off from the U.S. There's another developer story. Ain't nobody really just. Well, now they're talking about it. Just our nation people don't know about it. But NATO, which represents the beast, is tired of the U.S. Because the U.S. uses NATO like a puppet. Like, anytime the U.S. needs to do something in Europe, they get NATO to do it. And NATO's like, I'm tired of doing your dirty work, and you sanctioning me. You know, you, you putting the foot up, you know, you putting the foot up my ass, and I'm putting in work for you. So the beast is hating the whore. So I, I don't see NATO back in the U.S. too much longer in the future. Like, NATO, the, the NATO going to turn against the U.S. And so that's going to weaken Ukraine, because then the Ukraine ain't going to have NATO on the side. It's going to have the U.S. on the side. And the U.S. might, you know how the U.S. do, they break treaties. <laughs> they be like, man, ain't my problem, that's your problem, you know, and go somewhere else. So it's not looking bad for Ukraine. It's not looking, no, Salak, it's not looking good for Ukraine. Ukraine, you know, I'm going to say this through the spread, they're going to get took, man. Russia, that bear going to straight trample them and bring them all up in there, man. So uh, here's the articles on RRT. You know, I'll probably put it in the description box. You know, if you want to look up and read, you know, more about it, because I'm about to get back to the scriptures, is what I'm about to do, because uh, that's where the prophecy is at. So check it out. This is supposed to happen. We're going to go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 49 and 20. And check this out, Yashra. This reads, which I'm probably put this in. Highlight that in pink. So check it out. This is Jeremiah 49 and 20. Therefore, I heard the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom and his purposes that he have proposed against the inhabitants of T-Man. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. So check that out. He said, uh, heard the counsel of the Lord that he have taken against Edom. So that's why all these wars is happening, because Edom, the nation of Edom, which is A.K. the white nation, the white man, he's in trouble. You know, they're divided. You know, you got Germany, Russia, which are, you know, German Edomites. And then you got the American Edomites. You know, they all done wickedly. 
And now the Most High is taking counsel against them. And he's getting ready to, to destroy Edom because they're destroying the world. You know? And he said, I propose against the inhabitants of T-Man. T-Man was a son of, or, uh, or might be a grandson of, e of Esau. You know, T-Man, that's talking about Edomites right there. And why he's, I, I see why he used T-Man because T-Man was a warrior. You know, so it's basically, in his priesthood, the most house talking about the, the war. The warriors, the, the militaries of, of Edom, you know, which we're talking about the, the war right now. That's talking about the militaries, the strong man of Edomites, you know. He just said, surely the least of the flock. When he says the, the, the least of the flock, he's talking about the small Edomites, the small countries. You know, the small things are going to draw them out, which, like I said earlier, uh, Iran is a small country with small military capability, you know, but they're about to jump stuff off. If they bomb on Israel, if they shoot missiles off in Israel, that's going to make the U.S. have to jump in. That's going to make China jump in, Russia jump in, you know, and that's a small country. So the scriptures is uh, spot on when it says the least of the flocks should draw them out. And then you got Taiwan. Taiwan trying to go to war with China. That's a small country, you know. Uh, North Korea, another small country. You know, you got that dude, Kim Jong-un, he talking noise. He now has nuclear capability. He talking about shooting a missile off on Babylon the Great, America. So that's another small country that they, they can shoot one missile off and draw war, World War III. All it takes is one missile to pop off on somebody's mainland and we at war. Now, another small country that, you know, about to jump off war, Ukraine. That's another small country with military capability. And they all it takes is for them to shoot one missile off at Russia and it's on and popping. You know, so the least of the flock shall draw them out. That's happening. These little countries are now talking noise. And one of these little countries is going to shoot first. You know, they're, they're going to uh, uh, kick off World War Three. It's going to come from one of these small countries that's going to do it. And that's because they've been picked on for too long. You know, you've been bullied for so long, you know, that when that little guy get that stick, man, he going he gonna to swing back. He going to get tired of it. You know, he's going to be, I'm tired of you beating on me, man. So you can only be picked on for so long, and then you're going to fight back. So it's going to be one of these small countries that's going to jump off World War III. And then the big powers, you know, Russia, China, the U.S., they're going to jump in once, you know, these small countries jump it off. And then what's going to happen, all of them are going to be made desolate when Yahweh Shah show up. Because that's ultimately who's going to show up. And he's going to show who really got the power. He's going he to beat down all these heathen Gentile nations. And that's how the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. But we're going to look for one of these small countries. That's why I got my eye on Ukraine. I got my eye on Iran. I got my eye on North Korea. And I got my eye on Taiwan. You know, or any of these small countries that's, you know, talking that big boy noise right now and why are they doing that let's let's stay in the scriptures let's go to joel 3 and 10 and it reads beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks into spears let the weak say i am strong assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and get yourselves together round about Thither, cause thy mighty ones come down, O Lord. You know? So, hey, that's right there talking about hey, they, everybody assembling their military right now. Everybody getting their armies together. And it's, you heard that scripture right there. It said, uh, bleach your plowshares in the swords and your pruning hooks in the spears. These small countries are all about agriculture. That is about farming. They wasn't about war. But now, since they've been picked on, sanctioned, beat down so much, now they saying, hey, I'm strong. You got North Korea got nuclear capability. Iran has nuclear capability. These small countries now saying, like, look here, I'm not going to take that no more. You better take these sanctions off me or I'm going to launch a missile at you. And that's about to happen. That, that is about to happen pretty soon, you know, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashiach because he said that. So these little countries... Have now, you know, they ain't doing that commoner agriculture stuff. Nah, man, they get, you see Taiwan, they getting their tanks together, getting their troops together, they jets, they missiles, and they like, man, I'm strong. You got North Korea talking like they, the U.S., like, man, what? Say something, or I'll shoot a missile off at your butt. So, that's going down right now. 
and we got nothing but war on the horizon, which I'm playing another video. Let's go to this. This is Russia right here. Russia up here shooting missiles off from submarines. You know, with a submarine, you know, that's under the water. You know, you, it could be a Russian submarine on the coast of the U.S. about to shoot off a missile at Cali. You know, you just never know, like... I don't know why that's not playing. Uh, I played this video earlier and they got it blacked out, y'all, for all of so that, that should that should let you know something major going on as well. Like I can't even play that that, that video anymore. I just played it earlier. As you can see the, the thumbnail right there, but when I play it, it goes black. Okay, there it go, there it go. What well, you, you keep that y'all They they don't want us to see stuff going on. They trying to Nah, you ain't seen that. They launching off missiles from submarines, man. They can do an airstrike from anywhere. Mainland, submarine, warships. They got drones. And they're not doing this for no reason, man. They're getting prepared. These are drills, military drills get prepared for war. War is inevitable. War is going to happen. Like the Crown 19 going to start a war. You have people like they don't want to do that. They don't want to participate in that. That's going to start a war. There's no way of saying that war is not going to happen. It's inedible. And why is all this war happening? Let's, let's, let's get to the scriptures. Because that's how this place is going to be cleansed. And they getting ready for war because there's going to be a mighty warrior that they're going to try to fight with. And they can't fight with that. That power. So check it out. This is Revelation 17 and 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with them are called and chosen and faithful. You peep that? So who is that Lamb right there that the world going to make war with? That Lamb is Yahweh Shah, the son of Yahweh. You know, a mighty man of war. is coming back as an angelic force. You know, and he's going to subdue the earth. So they're going to be fighting each other. They're going to be all gathered fighting each other. And then your house are going to show up with that fathership. The chariots going to show up. The, the heavily military going to show up. And then they're going to fight with your house shot. And you, you can't fight with the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, who helped make the world. Are you crazy? But they're going to do it anyway because they're the heathens. They don't believe in our, our Savior, Yahweh Shah. You know? And plus, these heathens know Yahweh Shah is coming. They know who we are as a people. They know about this word. They know about the prophecies. So they think through their military power, they can fight against our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah, and he's going to beat down everybody. That's why when the kingdom of heaven gets established, ain't going to be no more wars. All these instruments of wars is going to be subdued. They're going to be demolished. And we're going to reign with that power that's going to be unshakable. As it said, and the lamb shall overcome them. Man, you can't battle against your Howard Shah, you know, but you can't tell the heathen that, man. They, they're godless people, and they 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 always went to war with your Howard Shah. How did they go to war with your Howard Shah? By destroying his people, us, Yashar Allah, Israel. They always devoured us, and like they couldn't destroy all of us or take us out. We still here putting up prayers, uh, calling on the names of your Howard Shah, and Yahweh Shah and that's why he's coming, and they know that. So these other countries prepared to go to war with Yahweh Shah, which they will not win. And that's why I say, if you're in the U.S. military, man, 
Esau going to have your butt going to war with Yahweh Shah. And you, you, a hey, that's when Luke 19, 27 going to kick in. Your butt going to be destroyed. So you better not be in the U.S. military, have your butt in that military. You better get up out of there and move around because you do not want to be on the wrong side of the fence against Yahweh Shah. That is sure that. So with all this war talk coming, all this war happening, you know, we should not be in the spirit of fear. We ain't got nothing to fear. We, I, I welcome World War III to happen. We need World War III to happen because that's how we're going to get our kingdom. It has to happen, you know. So we should be looking forward to that. And we should be having that faith that we're going to be okay. We're going to be taken care of. And we should be ready for war. Because it's going down. So I'm going to go to Ephesians 6 and 11. Because that's what this word is for. This word is to get you ready for war. Get you ready, you know, for what's to come. That way when it comes, you battle take you ready for it. You knew it was coming. You built up with your scriptures. And you ready. You know, and you, you got that faith, which is to go to that oil that Yahweh Bashan Shah will protect this hopeful elect. So we ain't got nothing to worry about. We'll be safe. You know, and then he said that right here in Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of Yahweh that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So this word and these lessons, these, these video pistols are to build us up. Edification is going to be built up. And what are you being built up with? You've been built up with the word of Yahweh Bashiach Shah, which is our armor. You know, it fortifies your mind, you know, so that you're not in a fearful state when World War III pop off. You're not in a fearful state when Civil War pop off. You know, you're ready for it. You already got, you know, what you're going to do. Your ideas like, okay, I got this put back. I'm going to do this. And even that don't work, you know, we're built with the trust and the faith of your high Bashiach Shah that he'll order our steps and put us in a safe place to where we're preserved. You know, that's the whole point of this word right here is to get you ready because the two thirds don't have this knowledge. The two thirds ain't paying attention to what's going on. So when war happens and all this stuff really kick in, the famine, the pestilence, the wars, the earthquakes and all of that, you know, the judgments kick in, a two thirds gonna bug out. Because they don't know what's going on. They go, oh, my God. Oh, hey, World War Three going on. Hey, what, what I'm going to do? They're going to have that woe is me spirit. What am I going to do? We're not going to have that spirit. Because, like, we already been prepped that this is coming. We already prepped this is, this is about to happen. So what Yahab Bashan Shah is doing is he's making us war ready. We're ready for war. So when it hits, our mind is going to be clear. And we're going to be ready to do what we need to do in order to, you know, preserve ourselves. Which it really often leads to Yahweh Bashiach Shah preserving us. And to what we're gonna do, he's gonna keep us in that calm peace of mind. We armored up. We ain't ready for like like we ready for whatever this devil come with. His little moves, his lies, his propaganda, you know. Uh we, we gonna see a lot of us gonna see it coming before it even happen. When they move in the troops, we're gonna know what the troops is there for. We're not gonna be out there running troops. Save me. Save me. Hold up. Let me get on the Humvee. Like, nah, we know they here. To, to, to wage war against us. And we're going to know how to move. We're going to be quiet, you know, on the ground, you know, moving. Like how the troops move on the ground. You know, uh, what's that, the little, little crawl? Crawling through, being quiet. We're going to move in the shadows because we know what's going on. We know what's at stake. We know what Esau's doing. We know why World War Three is going on. And that leads to comfort. You know, that's when you armor it up. You ready for war. Just like that. And that, that's the people you want to be around when all hell break loose. You want to be around people, hopefully, Lex, that got their mind, you know, calm and cool, and they know the situation. You don't want to be around no two-third bug out because they're going to holler out, give your position up. Uh, a lot of them going to be crying. A lot of men going to be crying. And when the man cry, the woman going to cry. The, the children going to cry, and they're going to be crying, running outside, uh, giving up their position, how the troops come get you. The UN troops, the UN troops don't speak no English. So they got orders to put you to death as soon as they see you. Because these, like I said, these other nations know who we are. And this whole thing is against us because we are the children of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. So he wrote these scriptures. So this would be uh like, like the scripture that said, so we'd be armored up, we're prepared, we're ready for war. This whole book is preparation. Get you prepared for what's to come. 
And that's the type of people you want to be around so we can withstand the wiles of the devil because he's about to come down with great wrath. The devil about to come down with great wrath. Esau coming with it. Everything he got, his, his drones, his uh, biological warfare, which is going to lead, that's the pestilence. Um, his, uh, he got satellites that can shoot down uh, direct energy weapons. Like this devil got a lot of high tech military power because he was blessed with that great sword. And he's about to unleash it on the children of Israel, which the ones of us, the hopeful elect, we're armored up. We ready for war. We welcome war. We have not become warriors. We, we ready for it. So we got the Lord of Lords, King of Kings that got our back. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And we not scared and, and we ready for it. We got the, the greatest power ever created fighting for us. So why the hell should we be scared? Nah, we ain't scared. They should be scared. That's who should be scared. We shouldn't be scared about nothing. Because we, we got a great power that's got our back. And, uh, and we need World War III to pop off so we can get up out of this situation. You see this devil's trying to... Uh, chip us with his mark of the beast so therefore we, we got it and plus the world is just babylon the great is just wicked man it's, just, it's getting wicked and more wicked every day we got to get out of here we need the kingdom of heaven to be established and world war three is the usher in the destruction like i read in that scripture earlier to to make all these uh heathen nations desolate and we need that to happen they need to be destroyed so with that being said you know, I hope this lesson has been edifying. I hope I shed some light on what's going on. These world wars that we got about to pop off and who's at stake and who's dealing with who, who fighting who. Because we got three fronts, which is other countries. They're having skirmishes. But them three is the big major players. You got three small countries getting ready to jump off war. And that's Iran, Taiwan, and uh, Ukraine. They're trying to fight superpowers. And I believe that right there is going to jump it off. Like we just ran through some scriptures to, to show you that World War Three is inedible. It's going to happen. You know, you got effeminate, weak Jake's time. I don't want World War Three to happen. I don't want no one to go back to normal. Take my thing and go back to normal. And see, you don't want to be around weak dudes like that. <laughs> They're going to cry when this thing pop off. So... You know, it's Lord willing to be a next time. Quam y'all Sharala, keep that faith, endure to the end. You know, we ain't got nothing to be afraid of. Yahweh Bashan Shah got us. If you in this wise council, you've been listening to the brothers and the elders, the apostles from GMS, and the brothers that teach the doctrine of GMS. Hey, you made it at the house of David. You're getting you're getting fed with that that true living waters, that true food. So keep eating up, getting fat. Uh, like like I just read in that precept, man. Armor up. Keep putting that armor on. That way, you know, you ready for war. Because we, we got to go through war. You know, we got to be putting that fire. We got to be tested. We got to be tried. You know, you want to come out as gold. You don't want to burn up and be like some damn wood or some plastic. No, man. We got to be that solid gold, baby. So, I hope this has been edifying to the next time. Y'all, Shalom.